a news hour tonight. Bandits attack Katsina communities, displace farmers. An NPCL confirms full scarcity in Lagos. FCT promises restoration of normalcy. One dead, others wounded, a section of building collapses in Delta State. And foreign saying at least 22 killed in RSF attacks in Darfur. Hello and welcome to News Hour on Trust TV. I am Chiamaka Mwafo. Dozens of communities have been dislodged while hundreds of farmers were sacked in Danmusa local government area of Katsina State, northwest Nigeria, following incessant bandits' attacks. Residents of Danmusa, one of the most devastated local government areas in the state, confirmed this to Trust TV News during a visit to the area this Saturday. Abdullah Yamadi tells us more. Damusa is geographically located on the fringes of Rugu Forest, an area perceived as major hideouts of bandits terrorizing Katsina and Zamfara states. At the moment, dozens of communities, especially in western Damusa and Medebino districts, have been dislodged, and several farmlands producing thousands of tons of grains have been abandoned due to insecurity. Yeah, Indeed, no one can deny the fact that many of our communities have been displaced. And a lot of farmlands are also no longer accessible. A situation that has made lives unbearable. Despite all efforts, banditry continues to linger for over two years now. Well, we are trying at our own level to guard our communities, and the government is also trying its best. But yet, the situation is not encouraging. Our neighboring communities have been displaced, and our farmlands are no longer accessible for about four to five years now. So devastating. The chairman of Damusa, Sanusi Dengi Abbas, assured that efforts are being intensified by Katsina and the federal government to secure not only Damusa, but the state and northwest, as well as rescue the 83 captives kidnapped from Medebino town. He noted with appreciation the establishment of the local security watch co by Governor Rada, who are supporting other conventional security operatives in dealing with the menace of banditry and other criminalities in Kazakhstan states. Bungakche makaya shafazoro to abuni onde keda nahorukudi at night. There are times these attacks happen at night when there is little or nothing you can do to avert it. At times when I receive a distress call. The only thing I do is to contact the nearest security post, and you are not sure whether they will respond immediately or not. But we thank God. Now we are on top of the situation. While speaking on the sidelines of series of complaints and allegations about the inaction and insensitivity of some security personnel, the Namusa Council chairman said, People need to appreciate and understand the military chance of command before jumping into conclusions. He, however, expressed displeasure over the frequency of attacks, killings, abductions for ransom and rustling of animals, despite numerous efforts being put in place by the government to defeat the enemies. There is no leader who will want to see his people in this kind of situation. We as, we as leaders are doing our best. There are moments I saw our governor shedding tears because of concerns he has about our people. Observers and other public commentators are optimistic that security agencies are determined to end insecurity in Kazina on other northwestern states. Abdullahi Izumay Amadi, Trust Television News, Katsina. We go to Borno State, where at least seven Nigerian soldiers were killed after a mine exploded on a highway in the state. 
to vigilante officers said on Friday. Shaib Musa, a local vigilante officer helping security forces to combat the insurgents, said a military vehicle was traveling along the road linking the villages of Mungunu and Baga on Thursday when the vehicle detonated an improvised explosive device. Another security official, Isa Boka, said the explosion occurred after soldiers on patrol triggered the mine, which killed seven of them. Both sources blame the Islamic State West Africa province as well for the incident. The military is yet to comment on the issue. We come to the North Central where a 500 level law student of the Nasarawa State University, Kefi Baba Jazuli, has reportedly been killed by a yet to be identified gunmen close to Akwanga town, the headquarters of Akwanga local government area of Nasarawa State. A course mate of the disease, Jibril Usman, who come from the ugly incident on Saturday, said that the victim was murdered along an adjacent village of Akwanga. According to his course mate, Usman, the deceased corpse, which was at last night deposited at the mortuary in Akwanga, was buried today, Saturday. The police public relations officer, Nasarawa State Command DSP, Ramahan Nansel said that the information got to the command Friday about an attack on the area called George of Rinze village in Akwanga local government area. In the South South River State Police Command on Saturday handed over the body of slain a hot divisional police officer SP Bako Agbanshin to the family. Handing over Abashim's body to the family after a brief ceremony at the police officer's mess, Port Harcourt River State, the Commissioner of Police, Olatun Jidisu, said the late DPO tirelessly served in the command and dedicated himself to eradicating crime in the state. Dissu said the deceased was instrumental in arresting the notorious criminal Boboski, whom he said had terrorized motorists along the Akwaibam section of the East West Road. The CP noted that Abanshim restored order to Buri and its environs by eliminating all forms of courtesan when he was DPO in Buri. Abanshim was ambushed and killed on September 8, 2023, by a gang of criminals at a hideout in Ahoda, Ahoda is local government area of River State. Shortly after his death, the command launched a manhunt for the killers of the DPO, which resulted in the killing of a leader of the gang, one gift Opara popularly known as Tubaba, and some of his gang members. To cost of living matters, Yan market in Kaduna is deserted without customers' patronage due to the hike in the price of the product. Traders were seen sitting idle, praying for the customers to patronize them. Trust TV's Bello Musa tells us more in this report. There used to be a beehive of activities here at the Yam Market, popularly known as Endoya, in Kaduna Metropolis. However, the situation is different due to economic hardship in the country. See, see my yam. I cannot be able to sell it since morning. I'm living in Kakuri. Before I will go house now, I will go and borrow money for transportation to reach Kakuri. See, yeah, see, see, yeah, my yam. I haven't sell it. Nobody's entering to buy yam. How many days now I cover the yam? I cannot sell. Today again, I opened the yam. I did not sell. I want to go home now. What is, what is time now? I want to go home. But before, two days we'll drop. The very day we'll drop this yam, sell, we sell it. But we cannot sell it. Everybody will hear the price. They will run back. Everybody, they will hear the price. They will run back. Despite the cost, some people are still buying. Although, you can still get yam at a reasonable price. Yam sellers say the prices of yams are not within the reach of ordinary Nigerians. Especially this Niger yam, they say one million plus this year. Yes, that is 10,000 naira. Don't the people will buy it to these viral people? What much do you expect them to go and sell it? They have to put their own gain and sell. And when they put their own gain and sell, they will tell you, you can take one year from there. They will tell you, say, 11,000 or 13,000 or something like that. Yeah, yes. See now, see this, see this yam you are seeing now, like this. See it, I carry it. Uh, this one, uh, you get this one, f well, 15. This one, you get this 12,000 naira. One For one year, yes. 
Besides insecurity, they said removal of fuel subsidy is another factor responsible for high cost of food items. This yam you are seeing here now, transportation is 100 pieces of yam. It's 25,000 naira. This yam you are seeing here, 25,000 naira for one, one for, to enter Mutu, to Kaduna. Where we are taking this yam from? Ado Ekiti. Before we will read there, if we hold a transport, go come. We hold 7,000 naira. Enter moto to Abuja. From Abuja, we enter moto to Ado Ekiti. Take this yam. When I'm going to Ekiti, Ado Ekiti, so take this yam last week, I spent less than 35,000 naira transport. They call on the government to intervene to alleviate the sufferings of Nigerians. Bella Musa, Trust TV News Kaduna. Over in Lagos State, residents and commercial drivers in the Agege area of the state have been lamenting the scarcity of fuel that has hit the area in past days. Currently, the only area in Agege where fuel is available is Moshalachi Alaja, where it is being sold at 730 naira per litre. Here's the report. Discussions among commercial drivers and residents have in the last few days been centered on the increase in transportation fares in the Agege area of Lagos State. This, both parties say, is a result of the increase in the pump price of fuel, which has resulted in long queues in the few stations dispensing petrol, as nearly all stations in the Agege region are either out of fuel or have deliberately ceased to sell to citizens. Checks around the area revealed that Quest at Mosalashi Alaja is the only filling station open to those ready to buy the product. Some residents express frustration with the struggle to obtain fuel and the high prices they are being charged. I made the queue. I'm here on that before. I made the queue, but just on, I'm just spending and they said, uh, 30 minutes now, I'm the here. Queue. It's, it's 7 30. I said it's 7 30 in the time. So what our government will do for us? So the government help us again. Now we drive so see how everything they go now. And uh, they say we look on we look on. Oh uh, Nigeria now everyone does just suffer, suffer for another day. Oh what is survive? Just go and ask for Gary now. Gary, now they say rich man, now they buy Gary now for Lagos City. You know if they want to say, you want to go buy biscuits. Pure water, self for self, now they buy pure water. Now, the no matter what they ride, now I know if you talk again. Now they are pressed for Agege, now they sell prayer now. No prayer for Agege now. This prayer, this prayer, now they sell prayer now. They sell at 730 naira per liter. It's morning now, no prayer. Everybody now don't they walk out, walk out, walk out before you see that friend now. Don't they this one line itself for 730 per litre. If you go around the Agege or Ogba, if you move away there, Ogba here now, that's a Kamuri or Ogba here now, you know, chef for go to Kedja now. If you want to see friend now, you go to this a Maryland. Maryland, line itself for now, 220. This one is 730 naira per litre. The fuel scarcity and long queues will lead to increased costs and reduced productivity for businesses that rely on fuel, such as transportation and logistics companies, as well as operations of small and medium-sized enterprises, SMEs, that depend on petrol. These stakeholders say it is why the situation needs to be addressed with immediate effect. Still staying with the fuel scarcity, the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPCL, has confirmed fuel supply and distribution challenges in some parts of Lagos and the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, but promised to work on restoring normalcy. This reassurance was provided in a statement issued on Saturday by Olufe Michonea, the Chief Corporate Communications Officer of NNPCL. Michonea explained that the current tightness in fuel supply and distribution in some areas, including Lagos and the FCT, is due to a hitch in the discharge of operations of a couple of vessels. He emphasized that NNPCL is actively working with all relevant stakeholders to resolve the situation and restore normalcy in fuel supply and distribution. NNPCL's comment came amid long queues in some parts of the country with the commodities price going up. 
The House of Representatives has said it will call for the sack of the group chief executive officer of the NNPCL, Mele Kiari, if what they described as the attempt to destroy Langote Refinery does not stop immediately. The deputy spokesperson of the House, Philip Agwese, stated this while speaking with newsmen in Abuja on Saturday. Agwese noted that the lawmakers had already called for the sack of the leadership of the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority, NMDPRA. He observed that both agencies, NNPCL and NMDPRA, have shown that they are interested in destroying the Dangote refinery. He stated that many Nigerians have called off the proposed hardship protests, but added that they want to see Kerry sacked if that would guarantee the smooth functioning of the country. According to him, the House would investigate the ongoing spot between Dangote Refinery and the NMDPRA. Go to protest matters now. Ahead of that not planned national nationwide protest, the IG of police, Kayode Ebetoko, has ordered commanders of tactical squads to take charge of their areas of operations by preventing violence and anarchy across the country. The order comes following determination by the organizers of the protest to proceed with the protest, despite appeals by the government, individuals and groups. Addressing the commanders from the police for Mobile Forces, Counterterrorism Unit, and Special Protection Unit in Abuja on Saturday, Egbertokun said citizens have a right to peaceful protest. However, such rights must not be allowed to infringe on the rights of others. The Inspector General of Police also stressed the need for the commanders to ensure that all officers and men of the force remain professional by exercising utmost restraint in the face of provocation. Ebotiko had earlier requested demonstrators to submit their details to the police. Meanwhile, the Ondo State Police Command has asked organizers planning to protest on August 1 to submit the details of their activities to the command to prevent the protest from being hijacked by hoodlums. The State Commissioner of Police, Abayomi Oladipopo, gave the directive on Saturday following the earlier order from the Inspector General of Police, Kayode Ebetoko. This was contained in a statement issued by the State Police Public Relations Officer Fumi Layo Odunlami. The statement was titled, Nationwide Protest. Organizers to furnish police command with locations of protest before the D-Day for security arrangement. The command appealed to all participants in the protest to maintain the sanctity of public gatherings and lawful assembly while avoiding acts that could lead to the breakdown of law and order in this state. He also assured citizens transiting through the state of police protection, peaceful and violence-free protests. Still on the protest, the former governor of Kano State and national leader of the new Nigeria People's Party, NNPP, Senator Rabi Kwankwaso, has called on Nigerians and the youth to employ the power of the ballot box to resolve the current economic hardship in the country. The NNPP helmsman spoke on the background of a planned nationwide hunger and hardship protest by youths. In a statement published on his official X handle on Saturday, he said, although the idea of a protest resonates with him, Nigerians should rather be patient with the Bola Tinubu government and give it all necessary support to succeed. He traced the current economic crisis to bad leadership, saying that the hardship and hunger spreading across the country was avoidable. He also made references to some of the recent political and economic issues that contributed to setting the country on fire. The former presidential candidate appealed to the leadership of the country at all levels to take necessary steps to address the myriad challenges facing the country. So the protest. The Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Yeson Weke, says he is yet to get a letter requesting the usage of the Eagle Square for a planned protest bill to start from August 1. Well, Weke spoke on Saturday at a town hall meeting with critical stakeholders in the FCT ahead of the demonstrations which is tagged hashtag and bad governance protest. He said that no letter was sent to his office requesting to use Eagle Square for the planned nationwide protest in the FCT. The FCT minister said the protesters should not just make use of social media to send a message to his office. Wiki advised them to rather pass through the appropriate channels. 
Cardinal State Governor Obasani says Northern leaders are to be blamed for the challenges of poverty, insecurity and other factors mitigating the development in the region. Governor Sani says Northern leaders should look inward to find solutions to the challenges bedelving the region. The governor said this during a student summit in Kaduna on Saturday. Not about protests. I'm happy today you don't want to join this protest. We need to sit down. Like I said, when I met the other consultative forum only last week, I made it clear to all of them, all of us, including my humble self standing here, all the politicians of Northern Nigeria, in the last 15 years, we should be held accountable to what is happening in Northern Nigeria in terms of poverty, unemployment, lack of education, lack of security. As of 2016, some of us that live here in Kaduna, and Northwest in particular, we are not aware of anything called banditry, kidnappings, or insurgency. I can, if there's anybody here who is aware of that, can also attest to the fact that as of 2016, not 2019, 16, there was nothing like kidnappings even in Benogwari. I can tell you that for a fact. What went wrong? What was the problem? So President Bola made Tulungu not because we're in the same party, we're in the same government. He inherited the most broken system in the history of Nigeria. This issue of insurgency, kidnappings, banditry in the Northwest only started around 2017 and 2018. Go and check the facts. And I believe as leaders of Northern Nigeria, we must sit down, look ourselves in the mirror, ask ourselves the home truth. This is a news hour on Trust TV. Still to come. One dead, others wounded as section of building collapses in Delta State. More when we return, please do stay with us. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. Now we'll look at some of our top stories. We told you that bandits attack Katsina communities, displace farmers. We also informed you that NNPCL confirms fuel scarcity in Lagos. FCT promises restoration of normalcy. Over in Kano State, residents of the metropolis are demanding the whereabouts of the 100 mass transit buses which the Kano State government purchased at the cost of 2.5 billion naira in 2022. Tag the Kanawa bus service came, then Governor Abdullah Omar Ganduji had said the buses would provide efficient, affordable and safe public transportation for residents. Trustivist Usman Belu Balarabi reports that the buses have since vanished from the streets and of Kano and left to a story. In 2022, the Kano state government invested 2.5 billion naira for a mass transit scheme to address the shortage of public transportation in the state. Then Governor of the state, Abdullah Umar Ganduji, Christine it as the Kanawa bus service project and he started it with 100 high capacity buses and 50 cabs. However, findings by Trust TV revealed that a few weeks after the vehicles were commissioned and commenced operations, they mysteriously disappeared from the street of Kano. This has left many residents and tricycle operators who were expected to benefit from the project puzzled and raises questions about the whereabouts of the vehicles and the level of transparency by the last government and present administration on the multi-billion naira project. Transit of the vehicle would be better if we have them back because as it is now we don't know the whereabouts of this vehicle, we're not seeing them and we don't know what it used for either. So it would be better if we have them back and it will aid a lot of people going to work early morning. Well, I can't remember the last time I set my eyes on it, so uh, I'm not sure it's functioning. Even if it does not completely solve uh, the problem, I think it will go a long way assisting because you you find a lot of people by the roadside waiting for something to convey them to a respective work uh, workplaces and it's, nothing is forthcoming. The feeling is different for tricycle operators who were expected to benefit from the project. Trust TV gathered that the Ganduja administration had planned to use the taxes to over time replace the use of tricycles in the metropolis. This is why many of the tricycle operators had resisted the project and called the buses a nuisance to their businesses. 
to I am a star and no more touching the skakao but I'm my commander a car also honestly these buses were not even supposed to be brought back here rather than having them back they should remain packed especially that we are here and people need not to worry about commuting we are more than enough in attempt to track the 2.5 billion naira mass transit project trust tv went around kano metropolis for 10 days but found no evidence of the buses on the streets speaking on the whereabouts the kano state commissioner for transportation mohammed ugul explains it is true that uh, the last administration procured 100 high capacity buses ranging from a 45 seater to 50 seater for the use of uh, mass transit in the state. And uh, they are arranged to start, but I think there was a level of poor planning and uh, immediately they started there were a lot of challenges that arose that uh, necessitated them to stop we inherited those problems the buses right now are at Mahaha that is uh, being the road the playground what we are doing now is to develop a transport policy for the state, looking at every strata of the transportation sector and who does and how. And that is what we have been working on. And the policy will be the guiding principles of how the transportation will be conducted in the state. Further checks by Trust TV revealed that the buses are indeed parked at the Mahaha playground in Kano. However, it could not be ascertained whether the buses are complete or not, as the place is locked and guarded with security. A former secretary to the Ghana State Government and the chairman organizing committee of the 2.5 billion naira mass transit scheme during the last administration, Engineer Rabiu Suleiman Bichi, said the project had been put on hold. He linked it to the mass rejection of government policies amid the naira redesign controversy of the Central Bank of Nigeria in 2022. Osman Bella Balarebe, Trust TV, Abuja. Delta State, one person has been confirmed dead in the state capital after a part of a building under construction collapsed. The state government has now cordoned off the area halting construction on the site. Jonathan Hawaii tells us more. A scene of another building collapsed, this time in Asaba, the Delta State capital. According to eyewitnesses, the ninth floor of the building caved in and landed on a worker on the ground, smashing his head. Some other workers were lucky to escape with minor injuries. When they walk for down, then we operate away the turn concrete. Okay. Understand? Then the turn concrete, and the thing fall. And that time, no, no, and they walk someplace uh -huh. and die there. Just few persons, like two persons, sustained injury, but not fatal injury. Uh, but the guy had a fatal injury, frankly. The state government and residents of the area are blaming the contractor for bad construction decisions, noting that a commercial building in the location is questionable. And they came here and they saw a lot of abnormalities. And the man kept saying he has approval and he has approval. And just this afternoon, the building collapsed and somebody died. And they smuggled the person out. I was here when he was smuggled out and I see her video of it. So it's, it's crazy how things work and we can't continue to live in this kind of a society. Things should be done properly. This is a residential area. You can see buildings, they have common friends with them. People are going to be here overlooking people's rooms. It's not proper. The commercial areas where hotels are over there. I don't know how they got approval for that. Building, even you don't have to be a professional to know that this work is effective. And they are rushing a project without proper reinforcement. So, so it's but like what I said before, there will be a further investigation on the building and the result will be made to the public in a very short while. The question on the lips of some professionals is who approved the plan. Meanwhile, the dead has been taken to the morgue while the site remains condoned off. Jonathan Awaya, Trust TV News, Asaba. Vehicular and pedestrian movement has been halted for hours from Lafia, the capital of Nassau, 
to Doma as a result of flood due to heavy rainfall in the area. Correspondent Abubakar Abdullahi reports that some houses around the river were submerged by the flooding water. His report is presented from our studio. Flooding of River Amber in Lafia, the capital of Nasarawa state, has become an annual occurrence. Though it's a federal road, but present and past administrations of the state has made several efforts to prevent the continuous occurrence of the flood. But to no avail, as residents at different time call on the authority to take measures to put an end to the natural disaster. And right now I'm like this, on my way from Sabon Gadi Lafia to Doma. But due to the aeration, now I'm like this, I cannot even move from here to anywhere again. I will be turning back from here to my house right now like this again. The residents appeal for government intervention to reduce the suffering of the people. Uh, we are appealing to the federal, uh, state government they should look into this road if there is anything that they will do in order to help the people so that the passage will be a good road to people. It will be a help to the people living at this axis. And again, the people living at this axis, if a rain will continue like this, it will even affect the people that are living close by here. The disaster, which coincided with a state monthly sanitation exercise, attracted the attention of the State Waste Management and Sanitation Authority and Zonal Director of the organization, Abubakar Mohammed, who speaks on the measures taken by the government to prevent residents from the possible damage of the flood. We took a proactive measure even before the time. That is why it relaxes. It is not as heavy as how it was before. So we try to go for sensitization before the, the, the event takes place. And we try to move some of the residents where go to your relatives and whatsoever so that you can, uh, because of this, any prediction from NIMEX. The zonal director said governments will put measures in place to prevent future occurrence. Detectives from the Okooba Division of the Lagos State Police Command have busted a child trafficking ring, rescuing a two-month-old baby and arresting five individuals involved in the crime. The command spokesperson, SP Benjamin Houdain, discloses in a statement released on Saturday. Houdain revealed that the operation was launched following a report filed by the distressed mother of the abducted infant, who said that one glorious Sunday absconded with her son on July 11, 2024. The final buyers of the baby, Mr. and Mrs. James Owam, were said to have been arrested during a naming ceremony for the abducted child. Houdain added that all suspects are currently in police custody and will be arraigned in court upon completion of the investigation. The Summer Command of the Nigerian Immigration Service, NIS, said it has intercepted six suspected to be victims of human trafficking along Kankunu Wode Road in Badagri, Lagos State. The controller of the command of NIS, Abdullah Adamu, disclosed this during a press briefing at the Summer Bape office by Dagri, Lagos. Adamu said that the suspected victims were intercepted by combined efforts of men of the Nigerian Air Force 653 Ahave, Badagri, and men of immigration on patrol along the road. According to the controller, they were traveling to Ghana from Badagri at about when they were intercepted. Adamu said that they were traveling without a valid document. Mobile phone users are increasingly staring clear of pre-registered SIM cards, citing concerns about their legality and security risk. The sale of such SIMs, which are already registered to another user, has been deemed illegal in many jurisdictions due to their potential use in fraudulent activities. Miriam Haliru visited the popular farm centre GSM market and now reports. The SIM cards are usually registered in another username but sold to a willing buyer by some vendors as a convenient option for those who want to avoid registration requirements. This reporter posed as a potential buyer of a pre-registered SIM card in the market but found no willing seller. My friend is not even selling SIM cards. He was just on his own. And then a customer of his, whom he became well acquainted with, came and asked for his phone to make a quick call. 
Nobody knew he was a criminal, so he used the phone to ask for ransom. In less than 24 hours, authorities came and took him with them, claiming his mobile number was used to ask for ransom. He is still locked up as we speak, the shop owner revealed. Authorities have warned that pre-registered SIM cards can be used for fraudulent activities including identity theft and scamming. Telecommunications regulators and law enforcement agencies are working to eradicate the illegal trade emphasizing the importance of purchasing SIM cards from authorized dealers and ensuring they are registered in the consumer's own name. It is a very serious crime. We all know, I try my best to avoid offering pre-registered SIM cards for sale as my shop is an authorized shop and it will be easy for us to be located and dealt with. And Airtel now has an update of sending a user all mobile numbers registered under his or her details so it will be difficult to use someone else's line. The recent trend of criminals borrowing friends' mobile numbers to demand ransoms has brought attention to the issue of pre-registered SIM cards. In some cases, criminals have been found to use pre-registered SIM cards, which are easily accessible and anonymous to carry out illicit activities. However, when they need to make calls that appear to come from a legitimate source, they borrow their friends' phones, putting them in trouble. Because of what is happening these days in our society, I don't buy already registered SIM cards. Consumers are increasingly wary of pre-registered SIMs opting for legitimate channels to purchase SIM cards. The shift in consumer behavior reflects a growing awareness of potential risks tied to pre-registered SIMs. Mariam Haliru, Trust TV News, Kano. The North East Development Commission and EDC has distributed rather assistive devices and interventions to persons with disabilities in Brunei State to support their daily livelihood. The 188 assistive devices include clutches, wheelchairs, prosthesis, among others. Handing over the devices to the beneficiaries, the NEDC said the intervention aims to ensure inclusivity and empowerment of people living with disabilities in government's program for the Northeast region. The Managing Director of Northeast Development Commission, Mohammed Al Kali, stressed that the havocs of insurgency over the years increased the population of persons with disabilities, saying that the mobility devices will break barriers of socio-economic activities. And this event we are doing today will be repeated in the five other states in due course. Because we have procured enough product or item for all the six states, we are going to hand over the one from or of state to the EF today for all world uh, delivery to the stakeholders. When we talk about the population of persons with disabilities in Nigeria, the Northeast is second to Northwest. The highest number of persons with disabilities in the Northwest, then you come to the Northeast. The six states in the Northeast compacted together, when you count the number of the disability community, is almost 8 million persons with disabilities. In business, the Nigerian Naira showed little strength at the last trading session of the week, appreciating to below 1,600 Naira amid a volatile dollar index in global markets. At the FX market, the local currency gained 0.01%, moving from 1,589 Naira to a dollar, to settle at 1,589 Naira, 50 cover to a dollar. The local currency's modest gain comes despite the Central Bank of Nigeria's CBN ongoing efforts to stabilize the market. The dollar remains near its four-month low, with the CBN implementing several measures to control the exchange rate and liquidity. The dollar index's recent fluctuations have added pressure to global currencies, including the Naira. 
as the US dollar experiences a bumpy ride, emerging market currencies are grappling with increased volatility and market uncertainty. The Central Bank of Nigeria has disbursed $148 million to 29 authorized dealers as part of steps to stabilize the foreign exchange market amid the recent freefall of the Naira. A statement posted on the Apex Bank's website on Friday said the sales were made to the dealers on Monday, July 22nd and Tuesday, July 23rd, 2024, between an exchange rate of 1,417 Naira to a dollar and 1,510 Naira to a dollar. According to the Central Bank of Nigeria, the authorized dealers include banks and bureau de change operators. This development comes two weeks after the CBN sold $122.67 million to 46 authorized dealers, a move aimed at increasing liquidity in the country's market stability and reducing volatility. Away from Nigeria, at least 22 people were killed when Sudan's paramilitary rapid support forces RSF attacked the city of al Fashir. A pro-democracy activist group said on Saturday that this is the worst death toll after weeks of stalemate on that front in the country's civil war. The resistance committees of the area said on Facebook that the RSF had fired artillery shells on markets, hospitals and residential apartments and had used a drone to target a hospital. The city is the nation's army's last remaining position in the Darfur region and a key front in the war with the RSF that has turned Sudan into the world's most humanitarian crisis. There is no immediate comment from the RSF, which has in the past denied shelling civilian targets. The United Nations said more than 300,000 people have fled their homes in Arfashir as a result of fighting that began in April. A survivor of the 1994 genocide in Rwanda, Segre Rigwamba, rather, has recounted how he survived the three-month massacre in the country. Almost one million people, including women and children of Tutsi ethnic extraction, were massacred within three months. The killing was said to have perpetrated by Hutu ethnic militia group, as declared by the United Nations Security Council. Trotsivis Adomusa, who is in Rwanda, interacted with one of the survivors of the genocide and files in this report. Thousands of Tusi who were killed between April 7 and July 15, 1994, were given mass burial at the Kigali Memorial Center out of hundreds of mass graves in Rwanda. TV interacted with one of the survivors who shared his painful experience during the genocide. So I was uh, made along with a few people whom I was with to were made to be way helpless to, to be killed at any time. So the third the uh, 100 days, you leave it expecting to die each and every day, each and every single minute. Uh, Sometimes you are, you are, you are you, you think you are left dead because you, uh, many people are killed around you. I don't think we are, we are survived for, for any way, like maybe you've hidden somewhere and people not find you. No, it's simply that you are lucky to survive. Such said, though he struggles to forget some things, he will continue to remember certain memories. So there is something that may not sound so very painful, I mean, like really very heavy to some people, but for you it means a lot. If you say, for instance, when you are exchanging, I mean, when you are waving goodbyes, or the last word, for instance, or last meal, or what you did by the time when the last uh, minutes of living with your, your, your people, those are, they are not, um, they don't sound so horrible, but they are the most painful thing. The United Nations Special Advisor to the Secretary General on Prevention of Genocide said the genocide in Rwanda has taught them a lesson and have been taking steps to prevent further occurrence. Of course, uh, Bosnia Herzegovina Srebrenica happened in 1995, Rwanda in 1994. And from the two of them, we got the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, we got the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia. And then we, we got uh, all these laws, we got all these curriculums. We got a um, huge number of people developing expertise 
in what we call atrocity crimes, war crimes, crimes against humanity, genocide. Uh, we got um, the um, also uh, the, the regional organizations, the African Union especially, uh, the European Union, um, showing leadership, developing policy and legal frameworks on prevention of genocide. So if you look at the policy frameworks of the African Union, for example, you'll be amazed like how rich they are in terms of prevention of genocide. Uh, throughout my interaction in Kigali, I have observed that the different ethnic groups have reunited and committed to peaceful coexistence. And one key factor, according to uh, the narrative of the people in Kigali, was the abolition of identity cards that was previously used to identify individuals by their tribes, foiling division that contributed to the 1994 genocide. From Kigali, the Rwanda's capital, Adomusa reporting for Trust TV. Thank you, Adamusa, for that report from Rwanda. Now it's time for Sports News with Adini Adishafe. The fourth edition of North East Zona Chess Championship has ended the Bauchi State. The three-day chess event took place at Sunny Abacha Memorial Gymnasium Complex, Bauchi. The competition serves as a qualifier for annual national chess championship and possible qualification for international chess engagement. Tournament Director Akiwu Eugene urged Bauchi State Government to encourage chess events in the state, considering the number of talent discovered during the Chess Student Championship, advising chess players to redouble their efforts in subsequent events to win more medals, while taking the competition as a challenge to win more medals in making the Northeast Zone proud in Nigeria. Winners in the men and women categories expressed joy for winning the mental sport event. I'm happy. I'm happy because I think I'm just giving my best and I'm glad that my best won. I believe that most of them can do better than they performed, maybe due to some certain factors. And I also believe that, yeah, every lady or everyone else here can do better than they are today. President of Nigerian Chess Federation, GIG Usman Sani Mohamed, retired. All chess players to work harder to boost their chances for representing the zone in the upcoming National Chess Championship slated for Lagos in August. Chess! We all know, we, we know chess is addictive. Because it is addictive, we value it, we cherish chess. And it is very, very good for young kids because of its attributes of patience, endurance, perseverance, critical thinking and so on. That is why the important role in chess to share, touch move rule, is established. For children that are impulsive, you are encouraged to think before you act. Mustafa Otsman of Bauchi State emerged overall winner in open category, while rejoiced the Shire of Plateau came first in the women category, as Yahaya Suleiman of Bauchi State won gold in the under 14 category. And in football, President of Federation of International Football Association FIFA, Gianni Fatino, has disclosed that the World Football Governing Body plans to stage World Under-15 Football Festival at, while addressing FIFA congressional sitting in Bangkok, Thailand. In fact, no said the Under-15 Festival will feature all 206 member football associations that constitute FIFA. Meanwhile, Huan Yutin and Cheng He Hao of China won the mixed team 10-meter air rifle. The pair beat South Korea's Kim Yee Jun and Park Yang Jin 16-12 in the gold medal match at Chateau's Shooting Center to win the first gold medal at 2024 Olympic Games in Paris, France. That's Sport News. I'm Adeni Aji Shafe. Before we go, the Nigerian Senate has mourned the death of Senator representing Anambra South District in the National Assembly, Ifanyova. He was said to have departed Nigeria for the UK two days ago. Uba died in the United Kingdom, where he went for an operation. A statement signed by the Senate spokesman, the Nigerian Senate Senator Yemi Adaramudu, on Saturday in Abuja described Uba, Uba rather, as an exemplary leader, expressing expressing 
Expressing his condolences, the Senate President Gosolo Papi says Senator Fanny Uba was a dedicated and passionate legislator whose contributions have left an indelible mark on the nation. The Nigerian Senate further extended its deepest sympathies to Senators Uba's family, friends, constituents, and the government of Anambra State. Meanwhile, President Bola Tunubu also extended his condolences to the family of the late Senator who passed away in the United Kingdom. A statement by the President's Special Advisor, Media and Publicity, Ajurin Gelale, on Saturday eulogized the deceased as a renowned businessman and politician. May his soul rest in peace. And that's it for News Hour tonight. For more of our news programs and documentaries, please do what follow us on our social media platforms and on our YouTube live stream. I am Chiamaka Mwafo. On behalf of the news production team, thank you for joining us tonight. Daily Trust News Center, this is the News Hour.